Hi, my name is Olivia Gibson and I am a second year at Tuskegee University College of Veterinary Medicine and I am going to teach you how to prepare for your first year at vet school. This is going to be a lot of information, but stay positive because you've got this. You made it into vet school, congratulations. Let's get started. Now the first things that you're going to want to worry about are housing. Where are you going to live for school? Most students live in Auburn and then commute to Tuskegee. If you went to Tuskegee for undergrad, you might be able to hook up with some dorms on campus, but I would not suggest staying and living in Tuskegee unless you have like a group of friends that is already there. A lot of the housing is not that optimal. Auburn is a much better choice in my opinion. Um, also keep in mind that as the year ahead of you is gonna start a Facebook page for you, a lot of the second years will actually offer housing. So keep your eye out for that as well. The second thing you're probably wondering about is wardrobe. So you're supposed to wear business casual, but what does that mean? So in my experience, no jeans, no shirts with printed text on it. Generally, people either wear flats or heels. Sometimes people wear dresses. So here is an example of some pants that I might wear. I also have some gray ones and some black ones. They're just slacks, nothing complicated. Make sure you wear shoes that are comfortable because you're gonna be walking around all day. You're gonna end up with blisters all over your feet if the shoes rub on you. Business casual does not necessarily mean you have to wear what you wore for your interview, but that will also give you kind of an idea of what you wanna wear, but it doesn't mean you have to wear like the whole jacket, pantsuit situation. You can even wear some nice pants and like just a t-shirt like this. Like I've got, this is just a plain black t-shirt that I bought at Target. Okay, so your first day, super excited. Everybody's really nervous yet excited at the same time. The first thing you get to look forward to is orientation. Now, a lot of these things are gonna touch on during orientation anyway, but I'm just gonna give you a quick heads up just so you kinda know what to expect. Also note that my first year was during COVID, so everything was a little bit different. So keep that in mind as I talk about um, classrooms and things like that, and even just the general experience, it's gonna be a little bit different, but the structure of the school and everything works kind of is still generally the same. Orientation, in my opinion, was super long, but also it was online. So that's gonna be different for you guys. So they're gonna talk to you about grades. One of the big things about vet school don't expect to get A's and B's the first semester because it's probably not gonna happen. It's a big adjustment, whole new surrounding for you and a lot of new material. Something for me, undergrad, you know, I, we were all getting A's and B's and stuff like that. And then you're going to C's and it's like, oh gosh. But don't panic, literally. If you get a C, don't freak out, that's normal. Um, but they're gonna tell you if you get D or below, you can either get kicked out or you can get suspension. Another thing they're gonna give you during orientation is a parking pass. So you have two parking lots you can park at. One is right in front of that school and then one is kind of across the street. Also during orientation, you should get a bunch of goodies. Yay, merch. Okay, so you're gonna get a nice little overnight tote bag. You can also use it for lab. You'll get some scrubs. Warning, these may or may not fit you very well, but everybody's doesn't really necessarily fit that great. So you'll get a lab coat, a name tag that you have to wear depending on the professor. You'll get a stethoscope. Also, you'll get coveralls, which are of course super attractive and we love it because we have to wear them for horse dissection. You'll also get a dissecting kit for lab. Now talking about books, a lot of the second years are gonna give you their books because we don't need them anymore. If I'm being completely honest, I only used two books in my first year. One was dissection of the dog and anatomy. You're gonna need that no matter what you do. You can get it from a second year, you can buy your own if you wanna keep it, or you can get an online PDF for free. And then the other book that I read maybe the first semester was for microanatomy. Don't freak out about books and spending a lot of money on books because we got you. So my favorite thing about Tuskegee is the community. It's a smaller college and it's like a little village and you get to meet everybody and really get close with everybody and it's like your family. So welcome to the TUCVM family guys, congrats. You also have what's called Toll. And if you want more information about it, I'll have links in the description. It's like a prep for vet school. So it'll kind of give you a preview on some of the material and some of the course load. You can sign up for it, it's over the summer. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about how the school operates as a whole. So Tuskegee, one thing about them that is not optimal is that they're really slow on getting back to you and they're really last minute on telling you stuff. Have patience, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> 
So one of the things that I personally love that the school does is, is the Big Little system. So you're gonna have a second year to basically mentor you into the program. Anytime you're freaking out about a test, first test coming up, I have no idea what to study, what do I do, please help. Second year, got you. Personally for me, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for my big, so. Another thing is that you have an e-board. E-board is basically your governing body over your class. So they handle a bunch of different things like communication with professors, just kind of regulating class time, um, regulating exams, scheduling things, all sorts of stuff. So they basically represent your class as a whole. And you'll get to name your class and make a theme and make t-shirts and stuff off of that. And those are to raise money so you can buy your surgery kits third year. Don't expect to not have to pay any more money for school. So you have all your loans and stuff. I'm not gonna talk that much about loans. I've been told that they can mess you up with those. Don't freak out, the school will handle it. It might just take time. Make sure you sign up and do your FAFSA. Fill out the FAFSA before you start the school year. Do it as soon as you get accepted, really, because you're gonna need it to pretty much do anything at the school. I don't know why, don't ask, I don't know. Details about that, you'll find out in orientation, it's different for everybody, so I'm not gonna go into detail about that. And the school has a bunch of resources, um, even a counselor to help you out in times of struggling. So the school's got you, this family's got you, so no stress. The e-board also has what are called dues every semester, and it's to help gather up money for extra expenses later. But do be prepared to pay those dues as well. Um, you also will have to sign up with something called SAVMA to be part of any clubs or anything. They're gonna tell you all about the stuff in orientation, so don't freak out about it. Yeah. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about classes. So depending on the class, your professor may want you to wear your lab coat and they may not care. A lot of your first year classes are gonna be in your auditorium. Um, something to be aware of in the auditorium is the AC has been known to break in the summertime. It's not very well temperature regulated. So if you're a cold natured person, bring a blanket. If you're a hot natured person, bring a fan. Be prepared for it to be extreme one way or the other. It changes daily. <laughs> One thing you have to worry about in vet school is work-life balance, or in this case, school-life balance. During COVID, they gave us mental health days. Take a day off every once in a while. A, you deserve it, and I know once you get in the habit of studying all the time, you're gonna be like, oh, I feel so bad that I'm not studying right now. But seriously, take the break because you're gonna need it or you're gonna lose it because second semester, by the time of finals, I hadn't taken any of my mental health days. I was studying all day. I was like, great, this is a catch-up day. That was dumb because by the time I hit finals, I was like, I can't study anymore. Help me. Take breaks after tests. Stop it. Get some help. Another thing is make sure you get sleep. Don't pull all-nighters. A lot of research has actually shown that it's more productive to go to sleep and not know as much material than pull all-nighters because it reduces your brain power. So try to get at least six or seven hours of sleep per night. I know that's gonna be really hard with classes going all the way till four, and then you having to wake up in the morning. There was a period of time in my first semester that I wasn't getting enough sleep, and after I started getting more sleep, it was like, wow, this is incredible. So get sleep. Time management is another thing you're gonna learn. Try to find the best way that you can study the quickest and the most productively. So if you don't have good study habits now, go to toll and form some good study habits because you're gonna need them or else that's gonna be the thing that kills you. Prepare to study a lot. Another thing about studying is get a study group or a study partner. Literally, first semester, I was getting D's in anatomy, started studying with a partner, went to A's. So it makes literally night and day difference. It is literally the biggest lesson you will ever have in your entire life. What do you need for lab, you might ask? Well, you need your dissection kit, you need your lab book, you need your scrubs, and you need your name tag. Your name tag is good to wear because professors don't know your name, but they will learn it very quickly. Also, you're gonna need a big roll of plastic wrap, which will probably be provided by your big, so we got you. Um, additionally, it's nice to have a basket if you need lotion or anything like that. Get some white towels that you don't care about because you're gonna need that to wrap your cadaver. Also, wear closed-toed shoes that you don't care about because they're gonna get gross. And here are some things that may or may not go wrong while you're in here, but it's okay. 
stay strong guys, it's gonna be okay. Our first semester, we had a couple of power outages and then one by one, all of our classes were canceled because no one had Wi-Fi. So uh, depending on if you're in person or not, that could be an issue. So just keep that in mind. Finals week, really stressful week. Personally, I would encourage you to prepare for finals a couple weeks in advance. So just kind of start gradually like getting ready. Big thing is don't cram and don't pull all nighters. Also for us, all of our anatomy exams were on Saturdays and that includes lab and lecture. So that can be from one to four. So prepare to have possibly your weekends taken away from you. But um, the year above us didn't have them on weekends so it might be different for you, I don't know. You know how to prepare for your first year, so what do you do after your first semester? You're gonna need a hard drive because you just downloaded like a million PowerPoints. You will not have space to have two semesters on your computer. So either get a hard drive or use iCloud or use Google Drive, that's what I use, so you can download new files the next semester. And another little personal tip that you don't have to do, but I did because I'm a planner. And I also have ADHD, so I, I need a little bit more time to study than others. So I actually studied a little bit over winter break. Now I'm not talking like, okay, I'm gonna literally memorize all this stuff. I just watched some YouTube videos. I was told by my big that neuro was pretty challenging. So I went and watched some Ninja Nerd YouTube videos on neuro. However, those were much, much more extensive than I needed to know, but it became quite helpful when we were talking about pathways and different things like that. First semester, what classes are you going to have? You are going to have parasitology. You're gonna have ethics. You are going to have clinical skills. You'll have anatomy, you'll have physiology, and you'll have microanatomy. And you'll have grand rounds. Three main courses are gonna be phys, anatomy, micro. So if you're in doubt on the other classes, focus on the big three, but don't fail the other classes. So that's all the information I'm gonna provide for you in this video. In the next video, I might make a video about classes, just talking about specific professors, the best way I studied for each class, and things like that. I hope you really enjoyed and benefited from this video, and thank you for watching.